How's it going y'all? Austin Carter here with Attack Line Leather. In today's video, I want to discuss how I incorporate my iPad into my leather work. So just to start, I'm not trying to sell you an iPad or any of the products that I'm talking about today, and I'm definitely not sponsored by anybody here. Um, this is something that was kind of born just by accident. Um, I purchased this iPad not too long ago, um, and I bought it primarily to just do some digital artwork and uh, things like that. It, I mean, iPads are cool, come on. But um, the more I started using the applications in the iPad, the more I used the iPad, iPad itself, the more I discovered, wow, this could really be beneficial to my work in Leathercraft. And so I'd like to share some of that uh, with you today. Just to kind of go over some of the, uh, the products that I am using, I'm using a 12.9 inch iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil. I utilize that to do my drawing. Um, I have this nice stand here that I use. I got that off of Amazon. I'll obviously link everything in the description. I get no kickbacks, but if you're if you're interested, um, and then I also use an Epson uh, XP4200 printer that syncs up to my iPad, and so I can print directly from my iPad, and it's really useful um, if I need to trace anything onto leather that I'm not able to draw myself. So let's talk about some of the uses that I've found for the iPad in my leather work. So there's obviously drawing, and that's primarily what I use it for. Um, I use the app Procreate in the iPad. You gotta purchase the app, I think it's 10 bucks. It's not very expensive, but it's paid for itself 10 times over uh, with the amount of work that I do to uh, help get my patterns and products out there. So in using this app, you're able to draw artwork, you're able to design patterns, um, and I'm gonna show you a lot of how I do that today. So another reason I really like having this iPad is it really helps me connect better with clients when they're asking questions about my work. What I mean by that is um, if they, you know, maybe they've perused my Instagram or social media and they've seen my work, but they have something particular in their mind that they really want to see well instead of you know drawing on paper and you get you know a race and there's a bunch of smudge marks or drawing on leather you know maybe they don't want to commit um, to a down payment yet but they really want to see well I go straight to my iPad and I can just digitally draw up something for them to see it doesn't take me any time at all it's nice and clean and neat and it's digitized already so it's easy to email, text, um, or send through a, a DM over social media. So it really helps me connect that way with, with clients and it's actually probably saved a lot of sales because I was able to hop on here and kind of draw out something for them real quick for them to see. So another thing and I kind of mentioned it earlier is you can use it to design patterns and, and artwork to sell. Um, that's one of the things that I'm currently working on is, is coming up with pattern, digital patterns and um, artwork to sell. Um, it, right now it's just a, a money and a time thing. It's, well, do I hire someone to build, my, build me a website to sell or do I learn how to do it myself? And just, it's just money and time. So it's something that I am currently working on. Um, but again, I found a great use in the iPad and in Procreate to do this. I've been able to accomplish um, that pretty successfully and I, and I can't wait to start sharing all those patterns with y'all. So the last thing that I'd say that I really enjoy using with the iPad is that it takes really good uh, video and photos. And I know most of us just use our phones, but um, I found that just having a bigger screen, one, you're able to kind of see details differently than you do on a kind of a smaller screen, um, you're, but you're able to edit, everything's blown up, you're able to post straight to social media. You're, you're able to um, do just, I think, so much more than your phone. And, it, and it's just larger and, a, and it's just a better workspace, I think. All right, y'all, I'm, I'm done rambling. Um, I just wanted to kind of get um, some of that information out there to you. Now I want to jump into the iPad and go over some 
design, drawing, tips and tricks, aspects of my workflow, and I, I hope you yield some benefit from it. As we get into my iPad, the first thing I'll do is open up Procreate. I'm then going to tap the plus sign in the top right corner and start a new project. I generally always go with printer paper dimensions of 8.5 by 11 inches. As you can see, I have a clean workspace to start designing on. Today I'm going to design an 8x3 bifold wallet pattern and artwork. But first I need to set my measurement parameters so that I know my work will be accurate when I decide to print it out. First, I hit the Actions tab, tap Canvas, and click on Drawing Guide. As you see, a grid pattern has popped up over the workspace. But I want to change the dimensions, so I click on the Edit Drawing Guide and go down to the bottom right and click on the Measurement icon. I'm going to change the measurements from pixels to inches. I'm then going to set the margins to 1 inch. You'll notice that the grid has changed to 1 inch by 1 inch boxes. Hit done and we can begin designing. I'm going into my brush library and in the inking section pick Baskerville which is one of my favorite brushes. So I'm going to start drawing in my workspace an 8x3 rectangle. As I draw the line, I count how many boxes or inches down. When I get to the end, I hold my pencil in place until the line snaps and makes a straight line. I then finish up drawing my lines until I have my 8x3 wallet. So this isn't anything crazy, it just takes a couple of minutes to do. Before I move on, I like to add some marks for my center lines to the wallet. So now that we have the outside of the wallet, what we want to do now is create an inside border for my art to go into. I'm going to go back into Actions and click Edit Drawing Guide, and I'm going to change the dimensions from one inch to a quarter inch. As I back out, you can see the guide shows uh, quarter inch boxes. Before moving on, I make sure the outline is lined up to the boxes, and now I'm set to draw my interior art borders. Still on layer one, I zoom in and draw my lines a quarter inch out. I repeat the process and draw my second box. Now that I have everything set up, I'm ready to draw. However, before I continue, I'm going to turn off the grid. I go back to my layers and create a new layer. So now that I'm getting ready to draw, I'm going to go back into my brush library and I'm going to go to the sketching uh, portion of it and I'm going to click the peppermint uh, pencil. It's just kind of the first one. It's the one I like to use. I'll then switch to a blue color. This kind of differentiates between uh, the, uh, the, the pencil stroke, which is, I'm going to be using to make my, um, my circles. So I'm going to draw in my circle. I know it doesn't look like much, but if you hold it and then with two fingers tap, it will give you a perfect circle. So you do a circle, hold it, it'll kind of be an oval, two fingers, and it'll snap into a perfect circle and then you can resize it and reposition it wherever you want it. So now I'm, I'm Basically ready to start drawing. 
We're going to go back into my brush library, and, or I'm sorry, I'm going to go back into my layers, and I'm going to uh, uh, take the opacity down for that circle, um, just so I can, so it's not clashing with anything that I draw. I'm going to go back into my brush library, into my eking section, and go back to Baskerville. And uh, I just really like the Baskerville brush because it has uh, kind of like an auto correct flow to it and so as you see like it kind of just self corrects and kind of takes out any handshake or anything like that so I, I really like that and then uh, just quick tip if you do want to erase or go back you just take two fingers and tap on the screen so that'll erase it it also speeds up your your workflow a, a ton instead of having to erase everything all right, now I'm going to go back to a, a black brush. And I'm just going to do a basic design. It's going to be nothing super fancy, just for the sake of time. Um, and so I'm going to just kind of work through this and uh, show, you how, show you how it comes out. As you can see, I'm kind of, you know, resetting it, erasing it real quick. Speeds up the process. Again, this is this is me just going pretty quickly. Make sure if you do use this program, you know, take your time. It's it's a good program, and it will really. Uh, lend uh, a lot of good work. Can't get my right. Can't get my lines right today. There we go. As you can see, I kind of crossed over some lines. I don't really worry about that because I'll just go back in um, here in a second and get the eraser and you just kind of erase where you don't want the lines to be at. It's really easy. All right, so I'm going to go click on my, my eraser. I'm going to go erase all the lines that um, don't look good or aren't in the right spots. All right, and that's basically just uh, one half of this wallet. Pretty simple, didn't take too long. Um, what you can do also is you go back up in your layers, you swipe left, you can hit duplicate, and now it's duplicated. You go and uh, hit your artwork select guide and you can uh, flip it vertically and then transfer it down to that bottom section. So in a matter of seconds, you have um, taken your top artwork and brought it down. And now you have a technically a fully drawn up wallet that you can print off and use if, if you want. So another quick tip is if you hit the select, you can tap with your finger on either side of the dots to move your artwork up, oops, uh, move your art, art, artwork up and down. All right, and that's basically how I drop my um, my wallet patterns, and this can be used for anything from nice sheets or belts. So the next thing that I'm going to show you all is kind of like a, a cheat sheet that I've created for myself. And again, it's just, uh, it's, it's just to create speed. And what I've done is I've collected a ton of different flowers. I've either bought the patterns, 
found them for free um, um, in template form online um, or gotten them from books and I've scanned them in and just uh, drawn them in and so I can uh, basically pick which flower that I want and move it over into my artwork and I'll, I'll show you how I do that here in a second. And it's awesome because you can resize them, you can rotate them, and um, it's, it's really useful if you're trying to, uh, you know, kind of speed through a project. So what you do is you basically select the flower that you want, you go up to your actions, and you're going to hit copy. Then you can go back into, so let's say, you know, we want to add it into that wallet we were just doing. We're going to go back into our designs and uh, click on our wallet. You're going to paste it in there. And now it's its own layer and you can move it, resize it, shape it however you want. And um, you didn't have to draw anything in there. And it's just kind of like a, a nice... Uh, you know, it's kind of almost like a a tap off for your a tap off for your iPad. It's just faster. And once you're in here, you can just kind of play around with it and see what you like. Again, it's real easy. You've got multiple layers, so you just kind of erase around what you don't want. All right, not, not too bad. But, you know, you can go in and kind of, yeah, I'm just going to add a couple lines here. That'll make a little bit more sense. Again, uh, guys, I'm speeding through this, trying to, trying to keep this uh, reasonably timed video, but um, I'm hoping that I, I'm giving you a lot of ideas and, and options to, to possibly work with. There we go. All right, so the next thing I'm going to show you all, something I really like, and it's the, the symmetry tool in Procreate. And so as you see, I have uh, two layers shown already. One's a Roper wallet with my uh, guide circles. I'm going to create another layer. I'm going to go up into my actions. I'm going to go into my edit drawing guide. And then I'm going to click on Symmetry and make sure you uh, check Assisted Drawing. And so basically what this is going to do, right, you, you see it's set to vertical. You're going to notice that vertical line down the middle of my work. And what happens is when you draw on one side, it mirrors or symmetrical on the other side. And so you know, if you want to say this wallet is just an example, but if you want to do a symmetrical pattern wallet where you, you know, have artwork on both sides, well, instead of, you know, taking all the time to draw everything out, trace everything out on either, you know, uh, vellum paper or tracing paper or, or whatnot or do a tap off, now you can just do one side of your work and it will automatically transfer over. So here I'm just going to kind of do a, a very fast um, little piece just to kind of show you how it works. Throw in a little cactus, of course. So as you can see, it is literally mirroring exactly what I draw on the opposite side. I think it's a pretty cool feature and it could come in real handy um, if you're doing a piece that requires um, your artwork to be symmetrical. And it's kind of one of the most difficult things, especially if you're having to hand draw. But if you utilize this, I think it'll make your process 
um, just more accurate and faster. Oosh. I cannot draw lines today, but I'm kind of rushing. So. Alrighty, almost finished up with this little bit and again, this is just one of those things you're just gonna have to have to play with and have to uh, Get used to but I've I've found that it has really sped up my workflow and um, I really hope that um, Y'all enjoyed this tip All right, guys, that about wraps up this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that the tips and tricks and, and seeing kind of what the iPad can do for you helped in possibly your future projects in Leathercraft. Um, again, if you don't have an iPad, I'm not saying go out and get one. I'm just uh, showing that there's a ton of uses for it that can really aid and assist in your Leathercraft artwork, patterns, you, you name it you can do it on here. So I really appreciate y'all. Uh, we just hit 15,000 subscribers. I'm, I'm completely blown away. That's so awesome. I really appreciate y'all so much and I, I can't wait to bring you more content. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share this video if you think uh, someone would benefit from it. And uh, as always, y'all have a great day.